السلام علیکم ہیلو ایوری ون دس از دی ڈیمو کلاس فرام پی جی یونانی مینٹرس اوکے سو آئی ول بی ٹیکنگ آل دی ماڈرن سبجیکٹس ان دس کلاس ول بی ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ اناٹمی آف دی لوور لیم اوکے اناٹمی از دی بیسک فاؤنڈیشن سبجیکٹ سو وی آر اسٹارٹنگ ود دی اناٹمی بیکاز اف یور کانسیپٹس آر ناٹ کلیئر ان دی اناٹمی اٹ ول بی ڈیفیکلٹ فار یو ٹو اسٹڈی ادر سبجیکٹس اوکے تو ٹو اسٹارٹ ود ویل بی ریڈنگ دی اناٹمی آف دی لوور لیم ٹوڈے اوکے اناٹمی آف دی ٹھیک ہے تو اناٹمی آف دی لوور لیم ٹھیک ہے تو واٹ آر دی ٹاپکس دیٹ ول بی ڈسکسنگ فرسٹ ول بی اسٹڈینگ آسٹیالوجی امپارٹینٹ اونلی امپارٹینٹ پوائنٹس وچ آر نیسیسری فار دی اینٹرنس ایگزام دیٹ از اے آئی اے پی جی ای ٹی آل انڈیا آیوش پوسٹ گریجویشن اینٹرنس ٹیسٹ اوکے دین ول بی اسٹڈینگ ریگارڈنگ دی جوائنٹس آف دی لوور لیم امپارٹینٹ پوائنٹس ان دس دین دی مزلس then the blood supply venous drainage and the nerve supply along with this we'll be studying the applied anatomy as well take care so to start with the first bone of the lower lip Uh, sorry the hip lower limb that is, is the first bone of the lower limb is the hip bone right hip bone is also called as innominate bone theek hai we all know that hip bone has three parts that is ilium ischium and پیوبس یہ ایلیا بون یا ہپ بون کے تین پارٹس ہیں دیٹ از ایلیم ایسٹیم اینڈ پیوبس دیز تھری پارٹس دے کنورج اٹ اے پوائنٹ دس پوائنٹ دس دس از اے کپ شیپ ڈپریشن ویئر دیز تھری پوائنٹس میٹ دیٹ از دیز تھری پارٹس میٹ سو دس پارٹ دس کپ شیپ ڈپریشن از کالڈ ایز اسیٹیبولم آپ کو پتہ ہونا چاہیے ایسی ٹیبلم کیا ہے بیکاز فردر ود می اسٹڈی دی جوائنٹس دس پارٹ از ویری امپورٹینٹ ٹھیک ہے ناؤ دس از دی ایلیم دس پارٹ از دی ایلیم دس از دی اسٹیم اینڈ دس از دی پیوبس دیر از اے فورامن ہیئر وتھ سپریٹس اسٹیم فرام پیوبس ٹھیک ہے سو دس فورامن از کالڈ ایز آپچوریٹر فورامن آپچوریٹر فورامن ٹھیک ہے اسٹیم اینڈ پیوبس از سپریٹیڈ بائی اے فورامن کالڈ ایز آپچوریٹر فورامن دیر آر ویری اسٹرکچرس وچ پاس تھرو دس آپچوریٹر فورامن آل رائٹ سو ان دی فردر سلائڈس ول بی ڈسکسنگ ریگارڈنگ دی اسٹرکچرس ٹھیک ہے اب ایلیم میں دس اپر اینڈ آف دی ایلیم دس از دس تھک اینڈ رچ دس پارٹ از کالڈ ایز ایلیک crest what is this called as iliac crest now what is the clinical significance of this part this part is used for taking bone marrow biopsy theek hai this part is used for taking bone marrow biopsy in case of leukemia and anemia so which part is used iliac crest of the hip bone theek hai next coming to the femur next bone is the femur femur ke bare mein what is the important point you need to remember that this is the strongest bone and this is the longest bone of the body theek hai these two points are very important this bone is homologous to which bone of the upper limb it is homologous to humerus of the upper limb all right so next we have patella next bone is the patella hmm. 
this patella here this is a triangular bone this is the largest sesamoid bone of the body which is the largest sesamoid bone it is patella now what are sesamoid bones these are seed like small bones okay they are seed like small and rounded bones theek hai now what is the peculiar feature of sesamoid bone the peculiar feature is the that these bones they develop within the tendon acha what about the other bones see when you study the process of bone formation bones they develop within the cartilage jise hum intracartilaginous kehte hain theek hai or they develop within the membrane which is called as intramembranous or they might develop both within the cartilage and the membrane which is called as membrano cartilaginous theek hai membrano cartilaginous but what about the sesamoid bones they develop within the tendon acha which is the tendon in which the patella develops what is the name of the tendon it is quadriceps femoris theek hai all right next bone is the tibia theek hai tibia is homologous to which bone of the upper limb it is homologous to radius and fibula is homologous to which bone fibula is homologous to the ulna you can see tibia is situated lat medially whereas fibula is present laterally tibia is also called as the shin bone this is the tibia this bone is also called as shin bone theek hai next coming to tarsals we have seven tarsals in the lower limb how many carpals are there in the upper limb they are eight carpals in the upper limb whereas we have seven tarsals in the lower limb ab tarsals ke bare mein kya important point yaad rakhna hai if they ask you which is the largest tarsal bone so what will be your answer it is calcaneus calcaneum is the largest largest tarsal bone theek hai calcaneum ke baad the second largest tarsal bone is the talus theek hai iske baad we have cuneif navicular here theek hai then we have cuboid then we have three cuneiform bones one is medial one is intermediate and the other is lateral three cuneiform bones a cuboid four then this is the navicular fifth then tarsal sixth and talus so let talus sixth and calcaneum is seven so so we have seven tarsal bones jisme do important point kya yaad rakhna hai calcaneum is the largest tarsal bone and talus is the second largest tarsal bone theek hai next we have 14 phalanges uh, and then sorry before that we have five metatarsals and then 14 phalanges to so important points isme kya kya the largest bone femur strongest bone femur largest sesamoid bone was patella which develops in the quadriceps femoris tendon we have seven tarsal bones jisme calcaneum is the largest tarsal bone and the second largest was the talus hai na and iliac crest is the part where bone marrow biopsy is done theek hai so these were the important points regarding the bones of the lower limb okay next in the next slide we'll be studying regarding the joints of the lower limb theek hai important point regarding the joints all right joints देखिए लोअर लिम में देर आर वेरियस जॉइंट्स ओके लाइक हिप जॉइंट नी जॉइंट 
ओके टिब्यो फिबुलर जॉइंट एंकल जॉइंट सब टेलर जॉइंट ओके टार्सो मेटाटार्सल जॉइंट मेटाटार्सो फेलेंजियल जॉइंट इंटर फेलेंजियल जॉइंट बट एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू यू शुड एटलीस्ट नो थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट जॉइंट वन इज द हिप जॉइंट द अदर इज द नी जॉइंट एंड द थर्ड वन इज द एंकल जॉइंट ये तीन जॉइंट आपको याद रखना है ये तीनों जॉइंट की एक खास फीचर ये है कि ये दीज ऑल दिस थ्री जॉइंट्स आर साइनोवियल जॉइंट ठीक है वेन यू स्टडी द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ जॉइंट्स ए क्लास आई बी टेकिंग ओनली अबाउट द जॉइंट्स तो इन दैट आई बी डिस्कसिंग इन डिटेल सो अब के लिए बस ये याद रखिए कि जॉइंट्स दे आर ब्रॉडली क्लासीफाइड इन टू थ्री कैटेगरीज वन इज साइनोवियल जॉइंट देन वी हैव फाइबरस जॉइंट्स then we have cartilaginous joints theek hai synovial joints are freely movable joints ab example yahi ho gaya aapka hip joint knee joint ankle joint theek hai fibrous joints they are immovable joints immovable joints iska example kya hoga sutures hai na सिंडोसमोसिस गोम्फोसिस ये सब है सूचर कोरोनल सूचर सेजाइटल सूचर ये सब सूचर जो है ना आपके स्कल में सो दीज आर इमोबल जॉइंट सो दीज आर क्लासिफाइड एंटर फाइब्रस जॉइंट एंड द नेक्स्ट इज कार्टिलेजनस जॉइंट दीज आर पार्शियली मूवेबल और सेमी मूवेबल जॉइंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल द जॉइंट्स बिटवीन द वर्टी ब्रेन ठीक है तो एटलीस्ट यू शुड हैव एन आइडिया दैट जॉइंट्स आर ब्रॉडली क्लासीफाइड इन टू दीज थ्री टाइप्स जिसमें से आपके लोअर लिम के तीनों जॉइंट्स दे कम अंडर साइनोवियल जॉइंट्स इट सेल्फ ओके सो फर्स्ट विल बी स्टडिंग अबाउट द हिप जॉइंट ठीक है यू कैन सी हियर हिप जॉइंट में दिस फीमोरल हेड है ना दिस फॉर्म्स द बॉल ऑल राइट एंड द असिटाबुलम दिस कप शेप डिप्रेशन है ना असिटाबुलम दिस फॉर्म्स द सॉकेट so what kind of joint is this ball and socket variety of synovial joint very important they can ask you what kind of joint is hip joint theek hai next important point dekho there are various ligaments in the hip joint but at least you should remember one very important ligament which this is, which is called as ilio femoral ligament ilio femoral ligament this ligament here you have a, you have ilio femoral ligament y shaped ligament okay this is a y shaped ligament this ligament is also called as ligament of bijlo theek hai now why is this important why is this ligament important because this is the strongest ligament of the body theek hai This is the strongest ligament of the body. ये है about the ligament. Okay. Next, there are few conditions. Okay, clinical conditions which you need to remember. See, is in this figure you can see that. Yes, see. This condition in this figure you can see that normally the neck shaft angle here. This is the shaft and this is the neck. normally the neck shaft angle should be 127 degree in adults but in some conditions this angle becomes more or less this condition is called as coxa vera if the neck shaft angle decreases then it is called as coxa vera and if the neck shaft angle increases then it is called as coxa valga theek hai one more important thing which you need to remember regarding the hip joint is this is the common joint which is prone for congenital dislocation theek hai और वॉट हैपन्स हियर इज ये कंजनाइटल बोले तो इट इज़ बाई बर्थ है ना तो इसमें क्या होता है द असिटैबुलम इज डेवलपमेंटली डेफिशियंट दिस असिटैबुलम हियर 
दिस इज डेवलपमेंटली डेफिशियंट ये कप लाइक डिप्रेशन है ना दिस विल बी डेवलपमेंटली डेफिशियंट सो ये हेड ऑफ द फीमर इंस्टेड ऑफ गोइंग एंड सिटिंग इन द असिटाबलर नॉच इट स्लिप्स ओवर द ईलियम सो दिस कंडीशन इट सेल्फ लीड्स टू कंजनाइटल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट ओके दिस मोस्ट कॉमन जॉइंट विच इज प्रोन फॉर कंजनाइटल डिसलोकेशन इज द हिप जॉइंट ठीक है नेक्स्ट वॉज कॉक्सा वेरा एंड कॉक्सा वेलगा नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन इज सो इन दिस कंडीशन कंजनाइटल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ हिप जॉइंट वी सी लर्चिंग गेट एंड इवन द ट्रेंडल बर्ग साइन इज पॉजिटिव Lurching gait is seen. You can see here. One second, I'll show you. ये देखिए. And Trendelenburg sign is positive. Okay. Now, next. In this condition, you can see. i think it is clearly visible now in this condition you can see there is destruction of the head of the femur the head of the femur is destructed into pieces all right so this condition is called as perth's disease theek hai and it is also called as pseudo coxalgia okay the next condition which you need to remember here in hip joint is ischial bursitis what happens is when you sit for long time the bursa over the ischium this gets inflamed there is inflammation of ischial bursa theek hai this condition is called as ischial bursitis and this is also called as weaver's bottom because weavers they sit for long time and this condition is more common in weavers that is why this condition is also called as weaver's bottom theek hai so this was about the hip joint and its clinical anatomy next coming to the knee joint all right knee joint remember that knee joint is the largest joint of the body it is the largest and complex joint theek hai one thing which is the largest joint of the body it is a knee joint i told you it is a synovial joint okay structurally this is a modified hinge type of joint theek hai and functionally it is a condylar joint theek hai these are the important conditions which you need to remember regarding the hip joint uh, sorry knee joint theek hai now what happens is there is one condition in which when a patient kneels down and cleans the floor this what happens is there is inflammation of the prepatellar bursa you can see this is the bursa overlying the knee joint see bursa aisa hai na this is the here is the bursa overlying the knee joint this bursa this is your patellar bone this part is called suprapatellar bursa theek hai this part is called prepatellar bursa pre patellar bursa this part is called as infra patellar bursa to house mates mein house mates mein pocha lagane ki wajah se jo hai this bursa over here this gets inflamed so inflammation of pre patellar bursa is common in house mates that is why this condition is called as house mates knee ठीक है 
if there is inflammation of infra patellar bursa we call this condition as clergyman's knee theek hai what do we call this condition as this is called as clergyman's knee see ye dekhiye you can see the inflamed prepatellar bursa here all right this condition is called housemaid's knee theek hai now there were there's one more condition here you can see here there is a cyst in the posterior aspect of the knee joint okay this cyst is very common in osteoarthritis okay the synovial membrane protrudes in the posterior aspect of the knee capsule okay so the protrusion of the synovial membrane in the posterior aspect of the knee capsule leads to cyst this cyst is called as baker's cyst theek hai baker's cyst remember ye bhi pooch sakte hain exam mein theek hai next condition is here you can see the genu valgum and genu varum genu bole to kya hai genu means knee genu the word genu refers to knee in this what happens is the knees are if this is your thigh and if this is your leg in this condition the knees are improperly abducted and adducted all right this common con this condition genu varum and genu valgum is most commonly seen in which disease it is most commonly seen in rickets theek hai and one more important thing this condition is called as genu valgum is called as knock knee and the other condition is called as bow knee theek hai may remember this knock knee and bow knee theek hai genu varum i'll write here genu varum is bony and genu valgum is knockney theek hai now next condition related to the knee joint next important condition which is related to the knee joint here you can see what happens is in there is injury to the medial meniscus this condition is common in footballers okay what this is the medial meniscus this is the lateral meniscus structurally there is a difference there between medial and lateral meniscus okay there are few differences that is why this medial meniscus is more prone to injury compared to lateral meniscus so you can see there is a longitudinal tear in the medial meniscus right this resembles bucket handle so that is why we call this tear as bucket handle tear bucket handle tear is usually is seen in the medial meniscus of the knee joint and this is common condition in footballers theek hai now the next important condition here ha next important joint here is the ankle joint can you see here can you see the ankle joint here when there is a fracture here this fracture they can either either be by malleolar 
or only one malleolus can be fractured or three all the three malleoli can be fractured so this fraction fracture can either be bimalleolar or trimalleolar and the fracture here around the ankle joint is called as potts fracture okay and this condition is common in which age group it is common in 40 years of age okay next condition here important condition which you need to remember is the stress fracture what is stress fracture it is the fracture of the metatarsal bones now what is the cause of this fracture this fracture is common in policemen soldiers okay because during march you know there occurs fracture of the second third or fourth metatarsal bones okay so this fracture is common because of marching right commonly seen in soldiers and policemen so that is why this fracture is called as march fracture ठीक है मार्च फ्रैक्चर अकर्स वेर इन द मेटाटार्सल बोन्स ठीक है तो दिस वाज अबाउट द क्लिनिकल एनाटॉमी रिगार्डिंग द हिप जॉइंट सॉरी ऑल द जॉइंट्स ऑफ द बॉडी अब नेक्स्ट वील बी स्टडीइंग रिगार्डिंग द व्हाट आर द लेयर्स ऑफ द लोवर लिम See, the first layer, outermost layer is the skin. Then we have superficial fascia. And then we have deep fascia. This is the deep fascia of the thigh. Okay, you can see the deep fascia. This deep fascia of thigh is also called as fascia lata. Important, very important. Write it down. This condition is, this uh, uh, so fascia is called as fascia lata of the thigh. You can see the skin. Okay. So where does the lower limb start from? Lower limb starts from the inguinal ligament. You can see there is a ligament here which passes from the anterior superior iliac spine. This is the anterior superior iliac spine and here you have the pubic tubercle all right so yahi se jo hai lower limb shuru hota hai to where does inguinal ligament extend from it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle why i am repeating this because this mid inguinal point is very important what is the significance of this mid inguinal point what is the significance? Femoral pulse is felt here at the mid inguinal point. Okay. Now, there is a condition in which there is absent or feeble femoral pulse. The femoral pulse is feeble or absent. In which condition? In coarctation of iota in last class when i was teaching about iota and its branches i told you there is radio femoral delay in coarctation of iota and i had explained even the pathogenesis as well okay so this is the clinical feature and the important point regarding the mid inguinal point so, is me do cheese important hai? One fascia lata, deep fascia of thigh is called as fascia lata. Thick hai? And second important thing is regarding the inguinal ligament. When we study the femoral triangle, we'll be studying that this inguinal ligament forms the base of the femoral triangle. Thick hai? We'll be studying this in the further slides. Alright. Now, the next condition is next thing here see you can see the uh, inguinal ligament here in this picture very clearly this is the anterior superior iliac spine axis and here is the 
pubic tubercle all right this is the inguinal ligament that is extending from axis to pubic tubercle theek hai next next slide hmm. now when you cut the transverse section of the thigh in you will be studying that the outermost layer as i told you is the sorry skin below the skin we have superficial fascia then the next layer here is the deep fascia hai na the innermost what do we have innermost here we have femur the innermost structure is the femur in the posterior border there is a ridge in the femur this line in the posterior border of the femur is called as linea aspera okay linea aspera is present in the posterior aspect of the femur so there are very many modifications of the deep fascia one such modification is the intermuscular septa muscles ke jo beech mein jo septa hai na that is only intermuscular septa so this intermuscular septa extends from the linea aspera here from the deep fascia to the linea aspera and there are three intermuscular septae which divides the entire thigh into three compartments theek hai this is the anterior compartment this is the medial compartment and this is the posterior compartment theek hai see lower limb mein first will be studying thigh then leg and then foot theek hai to thigh mein we have three compartments anterior compartment medial compartment and posterior compartment theek hai now this anterior compartment is also called as the extensor compartment theek hai medial compartment is also called as adductor compartment and posterior compartment is also called as flexor compartment yaad rakhiye jab anterior extensor hoga to obviously posterior flexor compartment hoga ठीक है एंड मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट इज कॉल्ड अडक्टर कंपार्टमेंट एक एक करके हम पढ़ेंगे तीनों को ठीक है एंड एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट में द नर्व दैट सप्लाइज द एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट इज व्हिच नर्व सप्लाइज द एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट इट इज द फीमोरल नर्व एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट इज सप्लाइड बाय फीमोरल नर्व पोस्टीरियर कंपार्टमेंट इज सप्लाइड बाय शियाटिक नर्व and medial compartment is supplied by obturator nerve khatam nerve supply nerve supply of the thigh clear femoral nerve sciatic nerve obturator nerve theek hai anteriorly here anterior compartment femoral nerve medial compartment kaun sa nerve hai obturator nerve फर्स्ट स्लाइड में मैं आपको ऑप्चुरेटर फोरामन बताई थी ना मीडियली ऑप्चुरेटर फोरामन था आई टोल्ड यू देर आर वेरियस स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट पास थ्रू द ऑप्चुरेटर फोरामन एंड वन सच स्ट्रक्चर इज ऑप्चुरेटर नर्व व्हिच पासेस मीडियली थ्रू द ऑप्चुरेटर फोरामन सो द मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट ऑफ द थाई इज सप्लाइड बाय ऑप्चुरेटर फोरामन एंड द पोस्टीरियर कंपार्टमेंट इज सप्लाइड बाय द शियाटिक नर्व ठीक है अब शियाटिक नर्व के बारे में इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दिस इज द थिकेस्ट नर्व ऑफ द बॉडी ठीक है द थिकेस्ट नर्व ऑफ द बॉडी इज शियाटिक नर्व एंड विच इज द लार्जेस्ट नर्व ऑफ द लंबार प्लेक्शस इट इज द फीमोरल नर्व लार्जेस्ट नर्व ऑफ लंबार प्लेक्शस इज द 
फीमोरल नर्व ठीक है अब फीम शेटिक नर्व आई टोल्ड यू आगे यू शुड इवन रिमेंबर द रूट वैल्यूज ऑफ दिस नर्व ठीक है तो रूट वैल्यू ऑफ शेटिक नर्व इज एल फोर टू एस थ्री शेटिक नर्व एल फोर एल फाइव एस वन एस टू एस थ्री ठीक है रिमेंबर क्योंकि दिस इज दिकेस्ट नर्व इम्पॉर्टेंट नर्व है ये सो यू शुड बी नोइंग द रूट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस नर्व ओके All right. So moving on to the next slide. Okay. Here comes the anterior compartment of thigh. 